30 minutes clarinet practice. I often pick the clarinet up in the morning and just play blues, just play a blues. Um, for some of you who have been watching this, you'll notice I'm back on the buffet RC Prestige in Green Line. Some things weren't working for me on the Rossi. So I'm back here. Anyway, keeping it simple, playing the blues. say about keeping it simple and when people go oh, let's just play a blues I hate that phrase let's just play a blues because a blues has everything in it and making it interesting making it mean something <clears throat> too much and I'm just trying to you know and of course when you just sat playing on your own but if you can apply that when you're playing on your own to when you're playing with a band give this feeling of space makes it feel much bigger too busy in that which other people might think ah, no, because you could end up going that's 
another way around it. Or, you know, as a, if you're thinking like that. Or, same tempo, same chords. To me, that leaves so much more, so much space. It means people got time to breathe. Well, I, I think it's important when people are listening as well. It's important for people to be able to, to, to have a bit of space when they're listening. That's my own thoughts. You know, none of this is set in stone. Obviously, it's just what I, how I, how I like to listen to music and how I like to play music. So, if, I'll play two examples of a blues. Of one will be with a lot more going on, and one with how I try to play, but I always still feel like I play too much anyway. Again, too many notes. Think about the notes of what you're going to play. Like. Two different examples when I said too many notes there's probably people who are listening or might be listening to this going oh I thought that was quite nice and quite simple yeah I do have a simple way of playing and one of the things you know, I put in the description of this video is that I've obviously got technique but I'm not I, I don't see myself as someone with a lot of, like virtuosic tech technical ability like uh, many of the people I get to play with. Um, but I feel very, you know, you know, you might not have that, but my other sense is within what do the notes feel like that I'm playing and 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 I, I remember some of uh, being slightly intimidated by other people early on, you know, watching someone go blah, 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 blah. great. And then I'd come in and do something very simple and and 
it just depends how your brain works, how you're wired up. If you, you know, I'm someone who's, I'm a bit simple in that way. I want space. I love melody. Melody is so important, you know. So, um, but if someone else thinks quicker, then they're obviously going to play quicker. So it's a mix and mix. There's no hard and fast rule, obviously. But anyway, I'm going to change key. That's something I always, it doesn't matter what key I'm in, I always end up going. So. I'm, I'm always ready to go on that. You know. Such a classic blues sounding thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to play blues in B flat for a little bit. as well it's a lovely thing you know I always say that in when I'm doing some of the master classes or, or uh, little workshop things it's like as soon as someone picks a tune or says a, uh, someone says ah oh, let's play a blues I'm already thinking of a tempo and that's already going in my head so no matter what's happening around me I'm still within the tune and the feeling you know it's getting amongst the tune. I always have this theory that, in my head, every tune has two tempos, a slower one and a faster one. Like, when I grow too old to dream, I think the tune, you know, this goes. So I think there's two tempos. There's this. think of that tempo or if I'm playing with some other people I know they might want to go if it's if it's not over those tempos I can't I, my brain doesn't work. And it's so funny when someone calls a tune and they don't play at the tempo that you're thinking, one of those ones. Um, anyway, I'm going back to blues because it's always fun to play blues. so much more than what I want to and it doesn't matter how long you've been playing or I could sit here all day playing playing getting less and less and less and then I get out to the gig and I end up wanting to fill every gap not every gap but too many gaps you know for me remember this is just my opinion this is far too much.
Such a nicer feeling when you've got all that space. And for someone listening, so much space. So when you start adding more, it means more. dirtier and bluesier, you know what I mean? So, when people say less is more, it's funny in life, all these cliches and all these, all these sayings that have come around over the years that people have been alive, it's generally, they're generally right. Um, less is more. I do think it's very important to, um, you know, think about what you're gonna play. I remember doing a, a, doing a, I was artist in residence at the, in, in Hamburg at uh, the music school and the first thing I did was get all the saxophone players we sat in a circle and I said let's play C jam blues you know ba da 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 ba da ba da ba I said we'll play one chorus I said and then then each person take a solo you know and uh, and when it came to it the first guy just went 
all over the instrument. It was incredible. I was, uh, I was, you know, there was no, there was definitely no doubt about anybody's technical ability or love for the music or, for, you know, there was no question about that. But my, my first question was, why did you play that? And he was like, I don't know. I was like, but, you know, what was the reason you played that? Was there a re and he was like, I, I, I didn't know what to play. I didn't, I said, well, what you should have done or what, what I would have done, if I didn't know what to play, I wouldn't have played anything, which might have sounded like there would have been a big gap and no space. But if it was like, ba da da dee dee boo dee right, now solo, a one, two, three, four. ba ba do ba do you know what I mean? That, that spate, rather than go... But down there, did a little babble do did a bottle do a... Like, but with no thought about it, or rather, one, two, one, two, one, But did a little babble do did a bottle do a da 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 it's got a bit of feeling, it's got, and I think that's so important, you know, reasons to why you play something. And then it was nice, because then everyone sat back and went, oh, okay. And I was like, you know, if you're playing with, doing jam sessions and things with people, you know, if people are there trying to like outdo you, you know, like vibe you out and things like blah, 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 best thing you can ever do. If someone comes up and wants to do that, that's, that's, that's their own projection, you know, of themselves, that they feel that they have to go, blah, 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 blah. you know, whereas, Whereas, just go and play the melody then at that moment, you know, whereas my, my thought is, who's in, right, who am I playing to here, right? Oh my gosh, how can I connect with that person? Not connect to them, like, how can I connect with, but how can I connect with the people in this room to make them enjoy what's happening? That's number one. Walk in, you know, and it, and it starts long before you even blow a note. Walk, in, walk into a room and, and you can see people. Hey, how are you doing? I see you, you know, there's a lot of that. Anyway, I'm going to go into A flat now. A flat's my favourite key to play a blues in, by the way, if you ever ask, if you wanted to know. I'm not as good in A flat or as proficient in A flat, you know. I've often wondered if it if, because I'm not as proficient in A flat as I am in F and E flat and F uh, uh, and B flat. May, maybe that's why I always play a blues better in A flat because ergonomically it's not as easy for me to get around in my own brain. So I end up playing less. Therefore, getting what I want to happen, which is, you know, playing less. So that theory's out the window. It's amazing. Like I'm, I'm specifically practicing playing less and I'm playing more than I ever play. And so, see what I mean? Practice can get into your own head. It's strange. But all you got to hope is when you go out and do a gig, you start... You see me sometimes on a gig, I'll go... And I'll go to blow and then go. 
And I actually physically have to take the clarinet out and go, no, leave the space, leave the space, you know. <laughs> Register blues. You can really think about the, the texture and the sound of the notes, you know. Take time to make the note mean something. so much, you slow it all down and you really have a think about what you're playing in the way of keeping it simple you can really there's more things that playing one note will mean everything and how does that note sound do you know what i mean so space. Hey folks, 30 minutes clarinet. Keep it simple. 
it's worth doing. Someone you should go and check out is Evan Christopher. And there's a wonderful video that he does um, from Jazz at Lincoln Centre talking about um, how he, you know, just talking about New Orleans clarinet and the role of the New Orleans clarinet uh, on a tune, Careless Love. It's really worth listening. The description, uh, in, the, in my description, it has a link to that video. Um, thank you for liking, watching, subscribing. And for those of you who've been super commenting, very kind of you. Thanks so much. Uh, please share it. See you soon. Bye-bye.